Hello everybody, here we are again, the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's session, we are going to talk about battery modeling uh, with MATLAB and Simulink. So it's especially interesting for you guys having an electric car. And it's a great pleasure for me to have an, a real expert, a MathWorks expert for battery modeling with me in that session, um, Javier Gazari. Hello, Javier, can you yes, hear me? Yes, I can. So would be great if you could introduce you, yourself briefly. So what is your role in, in uh, MathWorks and why are you working on battery, battery modeling so much? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so I am an application engineer at the MathWorks mm -hmm. and I uh, work uh, out of the Novi, Michigan office. And as you can imagine, we are surrounded by uh, automotive uh, companies here. For, mm -hmm. for them, it is extremely important to be a... Uh, doing really, really good and advanced work on, on batteries. So what uh, I try okay. to do is uh, help them create models for, for, their, for their batteries, for their cars. Okay. So not only in Formula Student, electric vehicles are an important topic, but also in, in the automotive industry worldwide and particularly for you in the, in the Absolutely. USA. Cool. So why not let's get started. So. Let's let's introduce our viewers to, to the topics we've prepared for that session today. Um, would be great if you could guide us through the content. Yeah, absolutely. So as I as I said, what uh, part of what I what I do is to make uh, to, to to try to make sure that our customers can create reliable and trustworthy and realistic models of their batteries in mm -hmm. order to be able to control them effectively so that they can be a, an, a good means of propulsion for their cars. So what um, batteries are um, very, um, very important, very um, also nonlinear in their behavior. So it is extremely mm -hmm. important that we know uh, their dynamic response. And uh, mm -hmm. some people, uh, I heard uh, them uh, referring to this as the battery personality, right? You need to know what okay. the battery personality is in order to be able to control it effectively. Mm -hmm. So the, the approach that we are offering here is to construct equivalent circuits that are electrical mm -hmm. anal analogies that are parameterized in such a way that when you... Um, stimulate the, the 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 battery block that is thus uh, created it responds as the real battery that realistic response relies on the fact that you have to create that battery block using model correlation to experimental data mm -hmm. right so that the response is as realistic as possible therefore your your model will have the let's say the fingerprints of your real battery. Mm -hmm. And then one okay. thing that is ex extremely important, in particular for lithium ion, but this is in general true, is that temperature is uh, very influential in battery performance. Okay. Very true, okay. very true. I've seen really teams suffering uh, at the Formula Student events because it was too hot, it was too cold. So totally agree that thermal effects have a, a huge impact on on battery state of charge on battery life and all that topics. right so because everything that happens inside of a battery uh, is uh, uh, thermoelectrochemical um, mm -hmm. the power that you can get out of the battery uh, depends a lot on the ambient conditions so by correlating the equivalent circuit model to experimental data acquired at different temperatures um, mm -hmm. we can uh, simulate uh, different ambient conditions and see how the model is going to, to behave. Okay. So basically what we, what we want to do, as I said uh, before, is, is to control the battery. Let's say this is, this is the battery inside of a, of a control loop, right? So I want to create mm -hmm. a good model for this battery in order to be able to design using modeling and simulation an adequate controller. Okay, so mm -hmm. I will use uh, a technique called equivalent circuit or, or mm -hmm. a, an electrical analogy called equi equivalent circuit that needs to have parameters that are uh, 
not linear and uh, unique or specific to the battery that I am using. In order to do that, we have, uh, or we offer something called, uh, or a technique called parameter estimation. That is a combination of Simulink and MATLAB optimization functions. And uh, mm -hmm. that is done in the following way. Let, let's say that you want to parameterize a battery model and you have also mm -hmm. uh, experimental data that you measured, let's say, at different temperatures of your, of your battery. So what you do is, because at the beginning you don't know the, the values of the parameters of that, uh, of that um, battery block, you set them as variables, initial guesses, mm -hmm. right? And then okay. what you do is you excite or you stimulate your model in the same way as you, as you stimulated your experimental setup, right? How you okay, just... And then, and then you synchronize Exactly. That, that is okay. called a model correlation. Okay. So what you do is you compare uh -huh. the result of your simulation to the result mm -hmm. of the, the experiment. At the beginning, it's not going, going to, to match because you parameterized the, the, your battery cell with initial guesses. But using MATLAB's optimization functions, you iterate on the search of those ABC parameters until you have adequate convergence, right? That is what, what we mm -hmm. call parameter estimation, and it's something that I will show you in a, in a second. Using okay. current as my stimulus. So what, what we did experimentally is at different temperatures, we, we mm -hmm. controlled the discharge of a battery. And at the same time, mm -hmm. we measured how the voltage behaved. And then we created a model that did the same thing, right, and varied the values of the parameters of the model so that the voltage simulate, the simulated voltage matched up to a certain degree the, what we observed in the experiment. Okay. So this is... And basically, just uh, just a question on that. Um, well, experiments have to be done, so there's no way uh, of, of replacing them. And the model itself, is it living in Simulink? Or what, what kind of tools are you using to set up a, a first model and uh, yeah, a first draft of a model that you then parameterize? Right. We are using a library that is an additional mm -hmm. to Simulink called Simscape. That is the, a physical okay. modeling library that if you recall, uh, Simulink, it's all about transfer functions and basically mathematics in graphical form. Simscape mm -hmm. uh, is a little different from that. In, instead of, uh, of having maybe a, like a gain that represents the, the resistance to talk about Ohm's law in electricity, you actually have mm -hmm. a block that that is that represents a resistor itself, and, and the the, mm -hmm. the connections to it uh, are not signal connections; they are physical connections. So, to the lines okay, that it. go out of it represent cables. Okay, mm -hmm. and the good the good news for our viewers is um, that Simscape. Um, and all the sub tools like sim mechanics, sim electronics, and power systems is part of the Formula Student software offer. So no need to, to buy or purchase additional products. Just go with our software offer, and you are able to do battery modeling. Great. So what is this uh, equivalent circuit? What, what does it look like? Well, um, typically it consists of. Uh, voltage uh, source, a DC voltage source that is going to represent mm -hmm. the, the, the voltage that I get uh, when I measure uh, open circuit, and then an internal resist resistor that um, represents the behavior of the separator inside of the, of the battery. Mm -hmm. Th that, that is one of the things that is most uh, temperature dependent, right? That, that's very, very mm -hmm. important to capture those. And then a series of RC uh, elements in a parallel that gives me the overall mm -hmm. dynamic response. And th this will, the, the, the meaning of each of these is going to become clear in the next slide. Um, okay. There may or may not be self-discharge in this case for the battery chemistry that, that we used in order to mm -hmm. parameterize the, the, the model for the example that I'm showing. We didn't, we didn't consider it, but a, um, 
a, a parasitic branch like the one that you are seeing on the screen could be used to represent self-discharge. That is to say, this, the, the state mm -hmm. of charge going down, but without the, the cell being, okay. uh, being um, um, used. Mm -hmm. Okay. As, as, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt on that. So you, you have crossed that out. So do you re recommend it for starters to, to model the discharge or is it something that you only should do when, when you have experience and working with more sophisticated models? Um, it depends on the battery uh, chemistry that they are considering. I would say that most okay. lithium ion batteries would not have that problem. Uh, it's more, mm -hmm. more, more typical of uh, lead acid batteries, but uh, I'm okay. just showing it just, just in case. Okay, good information, okay. thanks. So the, the question becomes now, what shape the equivalent circuit uh, or what kind of electrical topology should it have, right? So you, you, you have to decide mm -hmm. that. So how, how to do that? Well, let, let's say that you discharge your battery in the following way. You, you have your battery uh, at a mm -hmm. full state of charge, fully charged, and mm -hmm. at a certain time, you ask for a certain amount of current for a few minutes, like like what you are seeing there. Okay. Negative current uh, in my, okay. in my uh, example is discharge. Okay, so just for me to, to imagine it more, more uh, practically, I would apply a certain motor or a, a certain sink of energy to my battery. That's right, as long as you can uh, control it, right? So you should be able mm -hmm. to, to measure that current, and that's why I am uh, recommending mm -hmm. this to be a constant current pulse. And this is very typical in the battery mm -hmm. technology. This is called pulse mm -hmm. discharge. So what you what you see mm -hmm. when you do this is that the voltage behaves in the following way. At the beginning, it, mm -hmm. it is, um, it, it stays at, at a certain uh, level and it mm -hmm. goes down in a certain very typical or very unique uh, fashion. Mm -hmm you can identify a couple of uh, par uh, different parts in that voltage drop. One mm -hmm. that is instant instantaneous, another one mm -hmm. that is more or less exponential, and then at the end of the discharge, the open circuit that you are going to measure is lower than it used to be because now the state of charge is lower, right? Exactly. So from here mm -hmm. to here, you have less charge, right? By measuring this, um, voltage drop is that hopefully you'll be able to determine the state of charge of your battery, okay? okay. And that, that is mm -hmm. unique to, to your battery and is one of the things that the, the Simscape model that, that I'm showing you here is going to, to be helpful mm -hmm. for. So the okay. question is, mm -hmm. what is the equivalent circuit that, 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 that gives me this response? Well, one equivalent circuit like this one here can do the job mm -hmm. if the um, instantaneous voltage drop is associated with that uh, series resistor. The mm -hmm. exponential part is described by basically the product of R1 and C1, which has uh, units mm -hmm. of time and it represents the, the, the characteristic time of this relaxation portion in here. And then mm -hmm. a nonlinear or state of charge dependent voltage source, which will have a different mm -hmm. value depending on what, where you are in the, in the SOC range. Okay. 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 So that's the minimum configuration of a model to be able to synchronize to the real I would say so. Uh, some people mm -hmm. need for more uh, sophisticated battery electrochemistries, more of these in, in uh, connected in series, right? Mm -hmm. So each mm -hmm. of them representing or associated with a different electrochemical process. For example, mm -hmm. uh, hysteresis is a, is, a, is a very important one mm -hmm. in certain electrochemistries. But the, the point here is that each of these equivalent surrogate ele elements inside are not gonna have one number. They're, they're typically going to have a table what we, or a matrix. Mm -hmm. We call this a lookup table. What is inside mm -hmm. of, the, of this lookup table, so let's say in this, in this particular example, there's going to be a value in volts in each of these uh, 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 locations or, or elements mm -hmm. that will correspond to a certain uh, state of charge and a certain 
level of temperature, right? Remember that we are doing okay. the experiment at different controlled temperatures so that we can populate, right, each row of, of uh, this lookup table. Th this is going to be the end goal of the parameter estimation mm -hmm. technique, and this is going to be what I was referring to as the fingerprint of the battery. Okay, just a, a quick question on that. Um, can you comment a bit on what data has to be known a priori? So what kind of data has to be known from experiments? Right. And what kind of data will be well, estimated? What uh, I recommend uh, is mm -hmm. to perform a pulse discharge at several temperatures, mm -hmm. as many as, as they can. It, okay. it is a, a, a relatively time-consuming experiment, so th there's uh, there's so mm -hmm. much that you can do. But starting from a full a fully charged battery, you mm -hmm. pulse discharge it so that the state of charge goes from from one down to down to mm -hmm. zero, and then uh, mm -hmm. you will be capturing all the dynamics of the battery at that temperature throughout mm -hmm. the state of charge uh, spectrum. Okay. And, the, and well, one has to do that for certain temperatures, for relevant working Exactly. So if you are, so mm -hmm. um, what uh, what is typically done is uh, foreseeing a certain combination of uh, driving scenarios in, uh, let's say, mm -hmm. in, the, in the U.S., it would be uh, very different to be in uh, North Dakota as opposed to Florida, mm -hmm. for example, very different okay. uh, uh, weather conditions, mm -hmm. right? So you you should you should um, capture a range of temperatures that are going to be relevant for the racing conditions okay. that you anticipate to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you Great, want, thanks. we can go to to MATLAB, and I can see I can sh I can show you how this is done. Perfect. Well, I think that's also an important question for our viewers to to know where the stuff is in MATLAB Simulink, but also the resources that we are offering. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, as I said before, we are going to use physical modeling libraries. Uh, users familiar with Simulink probably worked with uh, things such as transfer functions, gains, and integrators. Mm -hmm. Simscape is slightly different from, from that in the sense that we are working on uh, at the physical level. So what, what I can do in order to create a uh, model of a battery using an equivalent circuit is something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, I'm going to very quickly uh, put together a simple model and then uh, I will mm -hmm. use another one to, to parameterize. But c can you see the difference between um, the Simulink uh, paradigm, which is signal-based, as opposed to the Simscape paradigm, mm -hmm. where you are connecting physical components with uh, lines that represent cables? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Ex actually, yeah. Well, it's really physical modeling. It's like an electric plan uh, or plant that you also could do really physically. It's you could actually put that together. Exactly. You, you put together a model mm -hmm. in the same way as you put together a circuit in a breadboard. So if mm -hmm. I double click this little guy in here, right, I have an explanation of what is inside. And then I go to source code and a MATLAB mm -hmm. function opens up and it shows me Ohm's law in here. This, okay. this code is called Simscape language and it is completely uh, flexible in in terms of it being editable. So I will be mm -hmm. uh, modifying this R value so that it captures the thermal effects that I've been uh, talking about, okay? But mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about doing this in, in Simscape is that I can try maybe different uh, model topologies so that the 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 equivalent circuit represents the behavior of my particular battery. And you can see mm -hmm. how easily I am modifying the, the electrical topology of the circuit, right? I'm just mm -hmm. uh, copying and pasting, basically. And here I have a, a, the, a model, an equivalent circuit that has three different time constants, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's go to a battery specific example. Mm -hmm. 
this represents the battery cell. And mm -hmm. if I double click it, it has the equivalent circuit inside, right? Resistor, okay. RC, and the voltage source. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, but that's all customized. Yes. So this is not not using the default blocks from the library, but that are customized blocks based on experimental data. On Exa well, n yes, but at the beginning, they are just initial guesses, right? So it is true. These okay. are uh, not just um, uh, constants, but lookup tables. But at this stage, they are initial guesses. So all, all of the, okay. the, the values of the, of the lookup table are the same. And I, I will show you uh, how that mm -hmm. reflects on the, on the uh, simulation. So mm -hmm. top right in here, I have the current pulses, okay? Bottom right, I have the experimental response. So this is current, this is voltage from the experiment mm -hmm. in gray. And the simulation, which is the blue line, is at the beginning incorrect because this is just initial mm -hmm. guesses, right? So the mm -hmm. key uh, here is to use this parameter estimation technique that I was uh, telling you before to uh, okay. parameterize the the model so that I mm -hmm. uh, I can fit my simulation to my experiment. So this is mm -hmm. the graphical mm -hmm. user interface for parameter estimation. I need to tell Simulink what was input and what was output. Okay, and then uh, uh, let's say the parameter estimation is an optimization um, where the parameters are varied in a way that they fit the, the test data. Optimization. Exactly. So what, what, what happens mm -hmm. is that MATLAB puts together an optimization function that is equal to the, to the discrepancy between simulation mm -hmm. and experiment. In this case, the, the two uh, lines that were, were in here. And mm -hmm. I tell Simulink which parameters are available to be changed, right? In this case, the mm -hmm. voltage source, the two resistors, and the capacitor. And each mm -hmm. of them is going to be actually not, not just a constant, but, or not just a scalar, but a vector, in this case, of mm -hmm. several positions, each one corresponding to uh, each level of state of charge, because I also ah, okay. want to capture the state of charge dependence. Mm -hmm. So when that is all ready to go, uh, MATLAB is going to, to, to say, well, I have all these variables to, uh, um, available to, to change in mm -hmm. such a way that the simulation uh, result approaches the experimental result. So what mm -hmm. you will see while this is progressing, and, and we will not have time to see it, uh, it, it takes about seven or eight minutes to, to do the, the, the whole mm -hmm. thing. The, the, this, this is an optimization with about more than four, I think it's 44 parameters varying at the same time, right? Okay. Four okay. equivalent circuit elements time the 11 mm -hmm. position, 10 or 11 state of charge mm -hmm. position. But what you are seeing here okay. is that Simulink is simulating over and over the model, changing mm -hmm. the values of the parameters with the objective mm -hmm. of making these two similar to each other. So mm -hmm. this one here needs to go this way, and this one here needs yep. to go that way so that mm -hmm. my model represents the behavior that I observe in the experiment. You can probably... Okay, no worries. I think the, the principle is, is clear. Perfect. Um... So once this is done, for different temperatures. Let, let's say I do the same thing at zero degrees centigrade, minus five, uh, plus 10, mm -hmm. plus 30, and plus 40, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. I will end up having as many um, rows for that lookup table as temperatures I had. So mm -hmm. what I can do then is construct a, uh, a model using each of the the cell blocks, right? That are going mm -hmm. to be in here now. If I go inside of each of these uh, these blocks, you see the equivalent circuit again. But now each of these does have the uh, complete lookup table inside. These mm -hmm. these um, 
vector values here contain the the real information of the of the battery and what I could do for example in this case um, uh, hopefully you are familiar with the signal builder in Simulink. What I am doing is I am asking for this current profile, so charge and a series of discharge pulses, 20 degrees centigrade mm -hmm. constant ambient temperature, and this is a stack of 10 uh, battery cells uh, connected in series, both mm -hmm. electrically and thermally. This little guy mm -hmm. here is a convection block that represents heat okay. exchange from cell to cell. Mm -hmm. So if I go ahead mm -hmm. and, and, and simulate this, what you're going to see on the, on the right is my controlled current, the voltage response of the stack, the state of mm -hmm. charge evolution, and very importantly, the temperature evolution of each of the cells in the stack, right? These cells the blue ones are the ones that are in the middle of the stack so you can imagine that the heat exchange is very poor yep. right so they they mm -hmm. are they have overall a, um, a, a higher temperature and the, the temperature excursion mm -hmm. is, is very limited but these ones are the ones at the at the ends of the stack so the, they can evacuate the heat to the yep. environment more more uh, effectively right so your question could be: mm -hmm. If my race is is uh, taking place at a, in a on a day that is very hot, right? And I mm -hmm. I I will accelerate my car in such a way that I will have this amount of current. My question is: Is this temperature going to be too high for the for mm -hmm. the cell to to remain in a in a in a safe um, mm -hmm. um, kind of, um, state right if not okay well then mm -hmm. you have to cool it down well like better yeah, exactly okay okay I, I was about to ask the question at the very beginning uh, uh, but now i really have to ask it um how how smart is it really to to heat or cool the battery is it absolutely necessary or can one design a battery pack that is well, there are different temperatures, but it's it's not crucial. So, from your experience, what what is the the smart way to deal with that? Well, problem? typically you have to cool it because, uh, lith mm -hmm. especially if you're talking about lithium lithium ion, uh, you cannot allow a lithium ion cell to go beyond a certain temperature because it it, it is okay. unsafe. It is unsafe. So, mm -hmm. typically you you mm -hmm. have to have a, a cooling system. Okay. So once you've done that, and let me let me show you a, an example of what you should ob obtain if you do this for your own battery cell. So mm -hmm. these are the the lookup tables, right? That 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 we identified with the, the experiments that we did. Three different temperatures. This relatively simple equivalent circuit. State of charge mm -hmm. resulted much more dependent on. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, uh, open circuit, so th this this mm -hmm. this uh, element resulted much more dependent on state of charge than it resulted to be dependent on on temperature. On temperature. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is this is very important here. This means that for this particular chemistry, you can estimate state of charge by measuring mm -hmm. voltage, right? Voltage. Some almost independent of correct of temperature. some battery mm -hmm. cells actually behave like this which would be or which would make a very different a very different mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. you can know the the variation of voltage with state of charge is minimal so you need something yeah. more advanced such as uh, common filtering mm -hmm. in order to determine mm -hmm. state of charge so it depends on your cell uh, something actually the other way around happens with the internal resistance, right? Much more dependent on temperature than on state of charge. This this makes sense from mm -hmm. from a physical point of view, uh, because uh, thermally activated processes uh, like uh, ion exchange within the the cell are are very very temperature dependent. So okay. mm -hmm. that is that is the the, the 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 key. You perform experiments. You propose a model, mm -hmm. you fit the model to your experiment, and you and you end up with a model that behaves like your real battery. So you, mm -hmm. you capture battery personality, including the effect of, of temperature, 
and mm -hmm. you have a means to determine what the state of charge of your of your okay. cell is going to be throughout the the, the the use of the of the battery. Those things mm -hmm. the controller need to, to know and a model like like this one here can mm -hmm. provide it. Okay. Great. So two questions on that. So um, for for common battery chemistries, is it or are there certain chemistries where it's more likely that one can neglect thermal effects? Or is it always always important to, to capture that? Because from the, the slide that you've shown, um, you can make decent state of charge predictions depending on the voltage. But is this always the case? Um, what you what you just said applies to state of charge, but uh, the, mm -hmm. on the on the other hand, remember that the the resistance, that is to say, the amount mm -hmm. of power that you are going to be able to extract from a battery is very temperature mm -hmm. dependent. So I would say temperature effects mm -hmm. should be included always, always included. especially if you are dealing okay. with uh, lithium ion chemistries. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, and then last but not least, um, assuming that I'm a Formula Student team member that is re that is responsible for, for battery modeling and the, the high voltage system, so how can we, how can we support the teams? So just let us let us go through the resources that MathWorks is offering. Sure. From from MathWorks.com, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. type lithium battery model in here from the mm -hmm. homepage, the first entry is a MATLAB central repository of all of the work that we've done with uh, with um, battery models, publications. Okay, excellent. Uh, Example models. Everything that I showed today is in here in the form of a model. There are white papers as well in here that you can mm -hmm. that you can read as an introductory uh, material. There are some short uh, videos that uh, explain the, the techniques. Um, and uh, yeah, you can always c contact uh, us if you have any any specific mm -hmm. question. Okay, perfect. So for you, that's. Perfect information. You have pretty much everything on one page. Models, getting started material, more sophisticated um, models, uh, same as papers and general information. So at that point, thank you very much, Xavier. It was, was a pleasure. And also for me, it was very, very interesting to hear that. I hope you had the same feeling. And basically, this brings us to the end of today's session. So thanks again, You're Xavier. You're very welcome. As you are, as most of you are aware, we have a Racing Lounge landing page where we put together all our videos in the context of the Racing Lounge. Um, just go to mathworks.com slash racing lounge. You will also find a lot of helpful information on the MathWorks from the student webpage. It's mathworks.com slash FSG. Um, what we'd really appreciate on that session, because it was a rather special one, we have been talking about a very special topic. Let us know your opinion on formless student at mathworks.com. We're really looking forward to obtaining your feedback. And last but not least, uh, let me point you to our complimentary software offer. So in case you're a formless student team, don't hesitate to contact us, get your software for free, including Simscape and all the tools you need for battery modeling. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.